In the last video, you learned some of the ways in which triangles can be named or classified. So, in this concept, we're going to talk about specifically isosceles and equilateral slash equiangular triangles and some of those special properties of those triangles. As you know that the angles in a triangle have to add up to 180 degrees. So, let's talk about the isosceles triangle first. So, over here, we have an isosceles triangle. It's isosceles because it has two sides of the same and it has two angles that are the same. So, angle B, which is not marked as a congruent angle, is called a vertex angle. So the angle that's different in a triangle, that's isosceles, it's called a vertex angle. Now angle A and angle C are the congruent angles and they are called base angles. A, B, and B, C are the sides of the same. You see that they're marked off the same over on the right here. So they are actually called the legs. And AC is the side that's different. It is called the base of the isosceles triangle. Now the base does not necessarily mean the bottom. It just happens to be in this case. But AC is the base. And these angles right here are the base angles. Because they are created by the base. And the base is in between. So the sum of the interior angles of a triangle is again 180 degrees. So on the triangle over here on the right, triangle ABC, it has a 30, a 70, and an 80 degree angle. Now angle A, angle B, and angle C, the sum of those angles is 180. And if I take those three measurements and plug them into A, B, and C, I'll notice that they also add up to 180. Hence, this is indeed a triangle. Now, more specifically, in an equilateral or equiangular triangle, because all three angles add up to 180, and in an equiangular or equilateral triangle, they're all the same, if I divide that by 3, I'm going to figure out that each angle in an equilateral or equiangular triangle has a measure of 60 degrees. A really important theorem that we can use with isosceles triangles is the isosceles triangle theorem. And it says if two sides of a triangle are congruent, then the angles opposite those sides are also congruent. And let's use this property right now. And the diagrams that you see below we have to figure out either the value of x or the measure of any angles that are missing. So let's do this. So in this first picture, top left, we see in triangle PMB that these two sides the, are called legs and they're marked off the same. So opposite the legs are the base angles and those have to be the same as well. So if angle P is 72, that means angle B is also 72 degrees. And it leaves angle M. Well, 72 and 72 equals 144. So how much more do I need to get to 180? Well, if I were to take 180 and take 144 away, I'm going to need 36 more degrees and so that's the value of M that would allow those three angles to add up to 180 and keep it isosceles also. Over here on the right, what is true about two of the lines above? Well, in this picture, we have two isosceles triangles, one bigger and one smaller. So opposite in the top triangle, the two legs we would have to have a 55 and another 55. So if I add those together, that gives a sum of 110. And if I take that away from 180, I find out that this angle on the inside is 70 degrees right here. Now if that angle is 70, 
these two angles inside here are called vertical angles. So vertical angles are congruent, therefore that angle is also 70 degrees. Now, these two sides are legs as well and they're marked off the same. So opposite has to be two congruent angles. So if we have 180 and take 70 away, that leaves us with 110. And if we were to divide that by 2, that tells us that both of the remaining angles are 55 degrees. Now we haven't answered the question. The question says, what is true about two of the lines above? Well, let's mark off the top and this bottom segment or line here. And let's put a transversal in here. And one thing we'll notice is that these two 55 degree angles, well, they're congruent, and in fact, those angles are called alternate interior angles. And since alternate interior angles are congruent by the converse, what is true about the two lines above? They're parallel. They have to be. Okay, jump down, bottom left here. First of all, triangle ABD, this triangle right here, is equilateral or equiangular. If all sides are the same, that means all the angles are the same as well. So that makes each of these angles, you got it, 60 degrees. Now we'll also notice that there's this right angle right here. And what that's going to do is, if we have a 60 degree angle, the angle next door to it has to be 30, so that it adds up to 90 degrees. So angle D, that whole angle D, angle ADC, is 90 degrees. Now, in this triangle, this little triangle right here, we'll notice that it's also isosceles. So opposite its legs have to be the same angles and so we have a 30 and we have another 30. So since 30 and 30 is 60 and if I take 60 away from 180 degrees I'm going to be left with 120 up top here. Can we do algebra with the special triangles? In any triangles the answer is yes we can. In right triangle ERU we know the value of angle R and angle U, but they're algebraic expressions. And we have to find the value of X and, and the measure of all angles. So, angle E is the 90 degree angle. It has to be. Angle R can't be 90 because that would make angle U 90. That wouldn't make any sense. So, if we have a 90 here, and angle R and angle U are congruent because it's an isosceles triangle, what we know is that angle R and angle U have to be 45 degrees. 180 minus 90 is 90. And so since these two angles have to add up to 90, we split it 45 apiece. And that's going to make angle R 45 degrees. So 7x minus 4 is 45. And 6x plus 3 should also equal 45 degrees. So we actually found the measure of the angles first. Don't have to, but we did. So if we add 4 and divide by 7, we get an answer for x of 7. And if this problem is set up right and we've done it right, we should get 7 on the other side as well. Taking 3 away from 45 is 42, so dividing 42 by 6 gives us 7, and that, hey, everything worked out just nice. Now, I could have done this problem a different way. I could have taken 6x plus 3, plus 7x minus 4, plus the 90, and set it equal to 180, and solved that equation first, to find x and then plug in the value of x into both angles. It doesn't matter how you do it, you're going to get the same thing 
regardless. Hey, I'll see you next time.